WROC in Rochester. This is News 8 at 11 in high definition. Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight. Friends gathered to remember and celebrate the life of slain RIT professor Edelyn Chun. Chun's body was found on February 6th, three days after police say she was killed inside her home. Friends turned out to honor her memory tonight at Mario's restaurant. Her friends say the outpouring of love for their friend is helping them through the grieving process. And to find out that other people felt that way too is just an incredible feeling because you can come together and, and grieve and laugh and cry and, and um, just be shocked by some of the moments that she did when out of character. And Police have arrested these two, 28-year-old Jarrell Henry and 26-year-old Natalie Johnson. They are both charged with second-degree murder. A new bill being tossed around in Albany has gun owners fired up. It would require any firearms owner to have a liability insurance policy of at least $1 million. Ali Tui has more on this controversial legislation. The bill has upstate lawmakers laughing. It's outrageous. And gun owners agree. Yeah, I wish they'd get off our backs. <laughs> Kidding aside, one downstate Democrat wants a law requiring at least a $1 million liability insurance policy on any firearm. Statewide. Assemblyman Bill Noje's district spans across Monroe, Livingston, and Steuben counties. He doesn't agree with his downstate colleagues where this bill is concerned. You got these New York City politicians that want to tell us here in upstate New York how to, what to eat, how to live our lives, what we can own. Uh, you just wish these people would go back to Brooklyn or the Bronx or wherever they came from and leave us alone. Ken Matheson is the former chapter president of the Shooting Committee on Political Education, or SCOPE, and he sees it as just another regulation tactic. That's the purpose of the whole thing, is to discourage people from owning guns. According to the legislation, the policy would cover damages from, quote, any negligent or willful act involving a firearm. Willful misuse or negligent can always be construed as illegal, and no insurance company is going to be forced to pay off on an illegal act. And what about the cost to gun owners? We don't know because nobody currently offers that kind of a policy because it's not necessary anywhere else. We don't know what the cost would be. Currently, firearms don't require any insurance. Typically, accidents on your own property involving a gun are covered under your homeowner's or renter's policy. Accidents elsewhere are a civil matter. The bill has been kicked around for years but never passed. Although, according to NoJ, that doesn't mean it won't surface again this session. Nobody's laughing at things anymore, no matter how ridiculous they sound. In Rochester, Allie Tui, News 8. Assemblyman Felix Ortiz of Brooklyn introduced that bill. Calls to his office today were not returned. Back here at home, one man is dead and another in police custody following an early morning shooting in Geneva. It happened just before 1.30 this morning on North Genesee Street. The man, whose identity has not been released, was taken to Geneva General Hospital where he was pronounced dead. This man, 26-year-old Larry Mallard, has been arrested and charged with murder in the case. He is being held without bail. An off-duty firefighter helped save a family from a fire in Greece today. The Greece fire chief tells News 8 the firefighter spotted the smoke from his car just before 7.30 this morning. He then woke up the family inside that house on Whisper Creek Road. Everyone got out safely. The home itself did not suffer extensive damage. Two firefighters, however, received minor injuries when a ceiling collapsed on them. One was treated at a nearby hospital and then released. A Pittsford family continues to remember a relative killed in the Newtown tragedy. This little girl, six-year-old Catherine Hubbard, was shot and killed at Sandy Hook Elementary School back in December. Today, members of her extended family were at Eastview Mall to raise money for the Catherine Violet Hubbard Animal Sanctuary. That's in Newtown, Connecticut. Catherine's peace team, as the group is called, is led by her cousin, Jack Sullivan. The nine-year-old says the donations will help preserve his cousin's memory forever. Every, every donation puts us one more step closer. This is so important to the kids in that it gives them a way to channel their energy and their emotion around what happened. And at the same time, it really is going to help the entire community heal by building this animal sanctuary in Catherine's memory. The Animal Center in Newtown was created back in 2004 as a nonprofit rescue organization. It does not have a shelter. We've got good news for movie buffs tonight. The Dryden Theater at the George Eastman House is now open for business. The theater closed back in January for renovations. It originally opened back in 1951. 
The theater's management thinks that those attending tonight's grand opening will be impressed by what they see with the new Dryden. People are going to walk in and say, wow, darker colors, comfortable, beautiful seats, a new screen, digital projection. The theater will still show movies on film with four film projectors. The guest artist for the theater's opening night was Oscar-winning director Alexander Payne. He presented his film Sideways. Well, it's not quite spring just yet, but baseball season is right around the corner, and that means it's time for the Rochester Red Wings annual Mass Hire Day. The team wants to hire concession stand attendants, cashiers, cooks, and suite attendants as well. The Red Wings say that in the past few years, the team has seen a wider variety of people coming out to apply for jobs at Frontier Field. We have noticed that uh, we're getting a larger range of applicants here since the, you know, the turn down of the economy in 2008. And not only are we getting, um, you know, high school students and college students, but we're getting folks who uh, don't have a job at all, or folks who are looking, uh, in some cases, for part-time jobs during the evening. I'm currently working two jobs and I'm not getting anywhere. And I've worked at the baseball stadium before, so to be able to back here and be a possibly able to work here again would be really good. The team says the number of hires will likely be lower this year because of the high number of returning workers. I want to update you on a developing story tonight. The search for a man trapped in a sinkhole under his Florida home is now over. Rescue crews say the 20-foot wide and 50-foot deep hole is now too dangerous to search, and they're moving forward with plans to secure that site. Adriana Diaz has the very latest. The family of a Florida man sucked into a massive sinkhole broke down in tears after rescuers called off the search for his body. With all the equipment that we brought in and specialized help, uh, we just have not been able to locate Mr. Bush. 37-year-old Jeff Bush disappeared Thursday night when the ground under his home opened up, swallowing his bedroom. Crews say the sinkhole is so unstable that they've decided to carefully tear down the rest of the house. It needs to be done from outside the perimeter with huge equipment that will be able to reach in and bring out uh, whatever we can of the house. They say the sinkhole is slowly growing and threatens other homes in the suburb east of Tampa. Firefighters helped families at risk evacuate with some belongings. The victim's brother is struggling with his loss. Jeremy Bush jumped into the hole to try to save his brother Thursday and had to be rescued himself. It's going to bother me for the rest of my life. I believe I'm going to have trouble because I was in the hole trying to rescue him. The community is showing support for the Bush family. A memorial has formed in front of the house, and officials say they will start demolishing the home Sunday morning. Adriana Diaz, CBS News. Coming up, it is March Madness for Syracuse, but it's not the fun madness. It's more the driving their fans insane type of madness. That Brown shows you why later in sports.